Hi, my name's Andy, and this is uh, a video about uh, paging in a REST API. It's part of a series about um, what REST is, um, how you would implement a simple REST API. So we're going to quickly uh, remind you what we were doing. Um, we're going to talk about why we would do paging at all, and then different ways of doing paging. So um, using page numbers, um, having a concept of uh, an archive, um, using HTTP uh, headers and response um, headers uh, to do it, and then doing it the way Twitter does it. Uh, have a little bit of a look at um, how we should be more hyperlinked than we currently are, um, and where you can find more information. Okay, so first of all, um, what we're doing is we're writing uh, a kind of a YouTube for poetry, for poems, um, but we're writing the API for the moment. We'll leave the website to later. Um, we've already implemented uh, get, put, post, delete, and patch operations. And if you want to look at how that all works, look back at previous videos in the uh, in the series. Um, and the get operation, um, <coughs> if you do a get um, and provide the URL of a particular poem, you get that poem. Um, but if you do a get and provide the URL of the collection of poems, uh, you get a list of the poems that are available. At the moment, when you get that list, it lists absolutely everything in the whole database. And obviously, if this is going to be as popular as YouTube, that's going to be a very long list. So this is how you do that. Um, you go to a URL, which is HTTP, and then localhost, assuming you've got it running on your machine, which is how I'm running it at the moment. Um, and then the port, which is by default is 8080. Um, and then the important stuff, so this is all one line. I've just put the backslash there to indicate that we're carrying on the same line. So that slash API slash v1 slash poems is the, the poems collection. Uh, curl is a command, that, a command line command for getting hold of um, something at a particular URL. So what we're fetching here is a list of all the poems in the system. And towards the bottom there with the square brackets, you can see the answer that we get back from our poetry server if we ask for that URL. Um, and that's a list of the IDs of all the poems in the system. There are only two of them. And those are their IDs. That's how it works at the moment. No paging. So, uh, why would you want paging? Well, fundamentally, um, we have to avoid people doing stupid things that, that take our server down by putting too much load on them. So, you know, we can dress this up as something that the user wants, and, and quite a lot of the time... Clients will only want to get things a page at a time, but um, if someone asks for a load of stuff, they probably want all that stuff, but we're not going to give it to them because um, it's just too much load for us. So we're going to give them a page, and hopefully we're going to give them a way of getting the next page and so on as well. Um, so this is really part of um, the way you have to change your thinking if you're working on a, a scalable application. There can't be any operation... Uh, that's unbounded. You have to always um, <coughs> uh, only do things that um, you know are going to finish in a reasonable amount of time. But as I said, yeah, most uh, most client programs will show pages worth of stuff to the user. Although why the user should have to click next to be able to see the next ones, I don't know. Okay, so uh, if you're going to display content in pages, uh, your first thought might be. Uh, we should do it We're using page numbers. That's the way books work, right? So here's a URL, um, API v1 poems, and then a question mark, page equals three. So um, if you remember from previous videos, all the stuff up to the question mark um, identifies the resource that you're talking about. So in this case, this is the collection of all poems. And then stuff after the question mark changes how you view it. So question mark, page equals three, I means show me all the poems, but uh, the way I want to view it, um, is to just just see um, uh, the third page of that stuff. Um, so this is restful in that this uh, this poems collection is a resource and we're viewing a part of it. It's easy to understand what's going on here. Uh, it's pretty easy to implement it. Uh, the main problem with it uh, is that it's unstable in the sense that if loads more poems get added in the meantime, when you move from page two to page three, um, you'll see some more poems you'll see some of the poems you've already seen uh, um, in the page 3 list because they've been pushed back onto page 3 by new stuff appearing. Um, that's if uh, that's, that's if your pages are ordered in, or if your results are ordered in 
uh, time order, which is often the, the default for things like this. Here's another way of doing something similar. Again, using page numbers. Um, but this time, instead of poems being the resource, we're treating the page itself uh, as a resource. So there's no question mark here. There's, there's only um, stuff with slashes. So we're basically saying, rather than poems itself being a resource, um, this thing called page 3 is the, in itself a resource. Uh, this is obviously easy to understand. Um, a page being a resource is a, is a reasonable uh, thing to do. It's easy to implement. Um, it could be ambiguous because if you have a poem called page, it kind of looks like, or a poem whose ID is page, um, it looks like we're accessing that poem, so you'd have to prevent that from happening somehow, so that's a bit annoying, but we could change that around um, by having a completely different URL. Um, again, it's unstable, but this time I find the, the instability even a little bit worse than the previous time. If you look at page three a week later, um, than the last time you looked at it, it'll be absolutely nothing like what it was like before because it will have been completely, all the things on it will have been completely replaced because new stuff's come in. So I find that distasteful. Uh, this thing is supposed to be a resource, but it's constantly changing. Even really, really old pages, page 100 will be constantly changing if more content's being added. Uh, seems wrong. So um, here's another way of doing something similar. Um, and this is the way, this is one of the things defined in the Atom spec. Atom is the RSS feeds blog post type uh, thing, which is uh, a similar idea to the kind of thing we're doing here. Um, uh, Atom is an XML format, but uh, um, it's fairly webby. So in this case, we have um, a URL, which is API v1, and then we say, have the name of the collection, which I've called poem underscore archive. But basically, the idea is it's not the, um, it's not the kind of live feed of poems. This is something that's um, for kind of longer term, looking back over it. Um, and you identify the resource you're looking for by giving the year and then the month, 2009 slash 11. So, um, old, old pages in this archive, in fact, anything except the, the current page, will probably never change. Um, so this this is restful and uh, because these the these months you can view as a resource uh, and it's stable because once that month's finished you won't be adding more stuff to it. So it feels more resty to me. Um, the way Atom deals with this problem of instability is that they have pages which they just acknowledge are going to be unstable in this way. But then they have this other thing called archives, like like what we've got on this page, uh, which will be stable. Uh, uh, before I get to the way that I have chosen to do it, which I prefer, uh, let's take a little detour into a completely other way of specifying um, what page you want, which is instead of um, changing the URL, um, we're going to change the HTTP headers that we send to the server. So in this case, the, the URL we ask for is just API v1 poems, but using that syntax in curl, we can send an HTTP header. So there is um, this standard HTTP header called range, and it, if you want to, you can put anything you like on the right-hand side of range. So here we've put page equals three. Um, it, uh, it's really intended for getting part of a resource um, from a server because you've already got some of it. So if you're downloading a file, um, you've already got half of it and then it went wrong. Uh, to get the second half, you can you can use a range header to say which bit you want. So um, that's what range was kind of designed for, but this seems like a legitimate use of it. We want to get part of this resource called poems. Um, uh, and we say what part we want by saying page equals three. Um, and then uh, your server, if it was well behaved, ought to respond like this um, with a, a, a code 206, which means it's successful, but you only got part of the content because you only asked for part of the content. Um, and the content range thing tells you which part of the content you got, page equals three. Um, so that's all fine. That works. Um, there's a slight problem with it, which is that you're not really supposed to return that 206 code unless the person actually asked for a range. Um, and the first time we ask, if we just ask for poems, 
uh, we want we don't want to give you back all the poems. We want to give you the first page. So we really want to provide a 206 code, even though you didn't provide a range. And technically, that's not allowed in the standard. Uh, but you may not worry about that. Um, so uh, this style is good uh, because it, it makes use of HTTP stuff. So we're not adding, we're not inventing a new system. It does stretch that concept of getting part of a resource um, a little bit further than I'd like. It's really, it's really kind of on the bytes level, and we're talking on a sort of human level. So I find that a bit dodgy. Um, but for me, the fatal problem with this is that you can't type these URLs into a browser um, and experiment with uh, what you're getting back from the API. You know, one of the things I'd really like for this API is that people can get up and running really quickly um, using it. Uh, and have fun uh, trying out, seeing how they can query it and things like that. Uh, if you can't type stuff into a browser, you've got to learn how to use curl or something like that. That's just too much like hard work. So for me, that kills it. So uh, let's have a look at the way Twitter do this. Now, Twitter are very focused on a timeline. So uh, it's not uh, necessarily 100% relevant uh, to other websites. Um, but I really like the way they do this. They um, they have a, a collection like poems and then a question mark to modify how you view it and instead of saying a page number they have this thing called since ID and they have this thing called count so counts I really like having count because it means a different client with a different window size can ask for a different size of page we're not imposing on them what kind of page we want we just say get me 20 items and we say count equals 20 and since ID is the ID of the last thing that we as the client have already seen. So what we're basically saying is get me everything after this item, with the, where the item has the, this ID. So um, this is RESTful, it does, um, we have got a collection here called Poems, um, and we are viewing it in a different way. Um, uh, and then you just say the last thing you saw. So you, the client has already got that information about what they saw last. So it's easy for them to construct this URL. Uh, the client can choose how much page, how much uh, they want, uh, um, the page size, by just providing a different count. And uh, this is stable, or relatively stable, to more stuff being added uh, on the beginning of the stream. Because even if loads and loads of stuff got added, a week later, if we asked for... Um, everything that happened after foo in this example um, we'll still get back approximately the same list of stuff that we asked for the first time we asked for it because any new stuff would have gone in uh, in front of foo so it won't affect this thing. Now that particularly applies to a time based uh, uh, timeline type feed um, but I really like the fact that you come back later you can expect to see pretty much the same thing at the same URL that, that feels good to me, it feels restful and stable um, and of course, uh, we can limit count. So if you don't provide count, or if you provide a count that's too big, uh, we just make it smaller. Uh, it's quite straightforward. Okay, so here's how um, I implemented this. Um, we're in our list poems function, which you, you may remember from previous videos, uh, was very simple. It was just basically that top line returning. Um, a, a generator uh, so you can iterate through the IDs of all the poems in the collection. So that first line, IDs equals ID for ID in db.poems, is pretty much all there was before. But now we need to skip up until we've done since ID. So the way we do that is we um, we use that itertools.drop while, this is just a Python y type thing, um, but basically um, loop through just dropping or, get, or forgetting about all the IDs. Um, until we hit since ID and then stop um, and then we need to just move one more along so we've got this I slice uh, which is just another another thing you can do with collections that means um, I move along one more basically because we've got that one there saying so start from number one and shift me around a bit Uh, and then the, uh, further down in the function, we need to do the count stuff as well. So we basically got to where we wanted to be by skipping along to since ID and then skipping one more. Um, and now we can uh, make sure that we stop when we've done count items by doing another I slice, this time starting from zero and ending at count. 
and we probably could have done just one slice instead of the two that we've done but the real code has a few more ifs in there so I think that works better if you provided no count we need to do some stuff and things like that um, so the actual implementation apart from that the rest of the code is um, only affected in sort of straightforward ways you would expect so the this list poems function which by the way will be used by our website as well as our API when it comes along uh, is where most of the work's done um, so the only other bit is that the uh, the code that actually deals with the URL um, now that the get function is going to make use of the stuff after the question mark um, we have to pass web.input into that function uh, look back at previous videos if you want to look at um, how these functions work um, and also follow the links in the blog post for a link to uh, the full source code so you can investigate this a little bit more but basically we need to pass on the, those parameters that you passed in, in the URL to the code if it's going to make use of them. Okay, so one bit that we really ought to have done, but I haven't done yet, um, is that uh, one of the principles of REST API is that it should be hyperlinked in the sense that um, you can get from, uh, whenever, when you're navigating around, you're given new links at each point so to find the next URL you need to go to, to find the next bit that you're interested in. So if you're looking at one page, it seems uh, pretty important and reasonable um, that you should be able to get to the next page and the previous page and possibly the first page and the last page. So um, we really need our response, instead of just being a list of IDs, to be something a bit more complicated that tells you um, how to get to the next page and so on. Uh, that's going to mean changing our API. So when we do that, we'll have to change it from V1 to V2. Um, so we'll do that at some point. Um, the way that Atom does this is uh, in XML, obviously, rather than JSON. Um, it provides this link tag with a rel equals next and then uh, a URL uh, pointing at the um, the next page. And, and there's a next, first, previous, and last, I think. And I think we want something pretty similar for this. Uh, it's not done, but it should be done. Okay, so that was how to um, do paging or some various options for ways you could do paging in your REST API. Um, if you'd like to... Um, see more videos there ought to be a subscribe button somewhere on your screen about now um, have a look at the uh, my youtube page follow me on twitter which is mostly links to blog posts and uh, youtube follow my blog for all the videos and also other general stuff about open source projects i'm working on and things i think um, and have a look at artificialworlds.net for um, the various open source projects that I'm, I'm working on or used to work on or gave up on and uh, see you next time